So here I thought things would be toning down for the upcoming summer drought, but looks like Bioware had one more thing in store for us before that happens, and it just so happens to be huge. Let's dive into the full EA Play demo and break down some of the things you might have missed, and also some of the things I was trying to tell you guys about in my last gameplay breakdown. Freelancers, what is going on y'all? Sly here, and I really did not see this coming y'all. I mean, you finally get to check out just about the same demo I was able to see last month at E3. Now, if you haven't seen it yet, check out the link down below or head over to Anthem's YouTube page. It's a narrated demo that shows off much more than the gameplay trailer they released to the public during E3, and it is absolutely worth a watch. Now, when I got back from EA Play, I tried to do a gameplay breakdown of the trailer you guys saw while filling in the gaps with what I saw at E3. And since I wasn't able to record it or take any pictures, it was really hard to try and paint a mental image for you guys on everything that was going on while watching another video. So I skipped over a lot of the smaller things and focused on what was important. Here though, you get to see just about everything that I did. Now I did get to see a little more of the stuff in the middle, you know, a little more of the conversation at the beginning, but it really wasn't all that different from what you guys see here. You really didn't miss that much besides just a little more fighting, like I said, some conversation, ability uses, and a couple of new enemies. So I guess that's really the only thing we're missing here, is to check out a couple of new yellow bar enemies. But other than that, this is pretty much spot on. So now that everyone's on the same page, let's head on into the EA Play demo and check out everything that wasn't shown in the previous trailer. Let's see what we can pull from it when we slow things down. But first... I mean, how awesome is this demo, right? I mean, I know it looks easy here, but I came back raving about it, and now you can see why. There is just so much to look at, so it is, the world is just so dense, it's so fluid, there's no texture popping, everything just works really, really smoothly, man, and it's, it, I can't wait to get my hands on it. Anyways, starting off, we get to see NPCs inside the Strider, and this is what I meant by it looks like a lot bigger inside than what it seems from the outside. But besides the area we're standing in now, there's actually a top deck which you take stairs to get up to. That leads to the cockpit, and I think towards the back there's some kind of storage area. But the big part here is that we get to put some voices to faces for the first time, and we get to see the UI along with the world map. Like I said last time, you walk up to your javelin in the back on the first floor, hold X to jump in, and then this engages the map and the menu. Now you can do a bunch of different things here, from looking around the world map, setting up loadouts, making your team, etc. Now in EA Play demo, I saw crafting pass by extremely fast, and I think this might have been edited here for that reason. But unfortunately we don't see that, it could be buried a bit deeper, or it could have changed altogether, we'll have to wait to find out. So one thing I told you guys last time was how large this map is, and for the first time, you guys really can get a sense of scale here. What you see here isn't even everything available, because the map keeps on going in all directions. Add in the tremendous amount of verticality in this game, and it's like stacking this map on top of itself three times, then connecting them with a bunch of tunnels in between. I mean, don't you hate it when like someone else plays and they don't fully zoom out of a map, or they don't like check out a weapon, or don't dive deeper into categories? So that way you can, you can like see everything. Yeah, I hate when that happens too. <laughs> Anyways, I'm still trying to go over what all these waypoint symbols mean. I'm sure the community will crack those down soon enough. But let's back up a bit and check out something I noticed at the very beginning. Take a look at the far right side of this menu, the top right. You'll see the word consumables. Now this is something completely new, guys. We now know from the Ask Me Anything on Twitter that eating is not a gameplay mechanic, so there won't be any kind of food or drink within these slots. So I wonder if perhaps traps can be deployed. I know what one of these consumables are, and we'll get to that a little later on, but the rest could be health packs, damage buffs, I mean who knows, but this opens up a whole new world of possibilities within gameplay. As we move on, we get our first look at emblems here as well, like player emblems. When you pre-order Anthem, you get the Founder's Emblem as part of the deal, and this is one area where you'll be able to see it. Also notice that these players are level 30. I'm not really sure if level 30 is the cap or not, but I've asked on Twitter before with no response. I tried again today, so hopefully with a little luck, we'll find out here soon. Next, difficulty. Now we're not sure how many levels of difficulty there are, something I also just recently asked, but that is something we'll find out soon enough. While the gameplay rolls on, we get a look at how the map is combined with a kind of LFG matchmaking built in. You click on the quest, add your teammates, or it will match you up directly from the map. No getting out and doing things separately or having to message people, it's all right here, conveniently placed within this menu. 
Also, if another friend of yours is online and about to do the same quest, they will see on their map that you're already doing it. As they scroll over the quest on the world map, it shows that you're inside it. So it's an easy way to see who is on doing what, and to get them and join them, it's just a few simple clicks. So as we continue on and the game gets underway, you see the cutscene of your javelin getting raised to the top of the strider. A sort of elevator takes you from inside the forward operating base and it pushes you all the way up to its roof where you join up with your teammates. Remember, Fort Tarsus and your forward operating base or your strider are first person encounters that are your like personal spaces. So no, nobody can join you inside your strider, that is going to be your own little area. So you go from first person inside the strider, jump in your suit, to now third person and you meet your teammates on top of this roof. So from here, it's pretty much the same thing that you've seen from the past trailer, except here they show off a couple of simple emotes, something we already knew was in the game, but now we finally get to see. So you jump off, fly through the waterfall, cool off, and then start kicking ass. However, one thing that is awesome about this playthrough is that the team is actually getting and picking up drops. At E3, the screen was too far away to be able to see what the different symbols were on the loot icons, and the previous gameplays were also like, kind of edited in just a way that you couldn't really see what they were. But now we can see that red is health, the blue is ammo, and if we speed things up here, we get our first look at some actual gear dropping. Now things aren't what you expect here. Purple is actually epic, as you see right here, and once we get a little further, you see another purple and a yellow drop. If you remember back to last year, yellow is actually a legendary. That is, if things are still the same. Quite a few things have changed since last year, so you never really know, but it's good to see real loot dropping from live gameplay. In the E3 demo I saw, they actually turned those things off. So when javelins ran over top of things, they pretty much just stayed on the ground. It's also good to see that they roll around. I'm already foreshadowing tons of like death falls and crashes chasing loot off of a cliff. With Anthem's verticality, it's actually bound to happen. And if you keep watching, right here is the exact opportunity that I'm talking about. Alright guys, so moving on, this is a great place to soak up Anthem's details and textures. Notice that you don't see them popping in and out or slowly being added to as you fly. It seems that every square inch of this game was created with such care that I have yet to detect any kind of loading textures or crazy popping areas. So props to Bioware on that because that's something I'm sure very tedious to make. Now once we get to the console version, that might be another story, but we'll get to that when the time comes. Again, you get a great sense of scale here. This area alone is massive, and once you land here, it takes you like 20 seconds to get to the bottom. You see just how big this world really is, and this is just one area. There are caves, enemies, encampments, and loot everywhere. So if you love free roaming around in games and just checking out areas, then this game is built for that. Another thing to check out is something that I mentioned in my last news video. When you're diving, your suit actually gets cooled off from the fast moving air or the extra airflow. And we can see that in action right here. I totally missed that at E3, but good to know for when you have a lot of flying to do. Alright, so now you all know the next part. Our level 1 storm pops in, and then we all fly by the big giant and then head down into the water. Another thing to note here that was edited from the last gameplay is that you see a loading screen between going into strongholds. So strongholds themselves aren't a part of the open world. They are they're like a separate instance. And once you load into this space, it then saves a checkpoint on the world map. So the next time you want to come back to do this stronghold again, all you have to do is click on it, create your team, and it will start you right here coming out of the water for this particular stronghold. But again guys, notice the detail, the fog, the plants, marine life, lighting, it all looks amazing. And once again, you don't really appreciate it until you've seen it live on your own TV or monitor. So even though this looks good right now, it's even better when you get your own hands on it. Alright, so as the gameplay continues, you guys have all have seen this part, the Colossus bust out the shield, then he runs through the mines, notice the shield health bar at the very top, something I pointed out last time, because that is a very important thing to take note of as this gameplay moves on. So as we get to the area with the relic, we come across our first public look of an ability from the storm. It summons a lightning attack that acts as pretty much like a primer for combos, something you're going to need to start using often for higher encounters. It's also worth noting that these players have high level javelin abilities and that this encounter was tuned down to make it easier so they could put on a good show. If it looks easy, that's because the devs here have tons of practice from playing it all week at E3 and, you know, practicing it beforehand. They are high level javelins with a tuned down enemy. I've been assured by developers that this thing will be much more difficult than when we do it. Just thought I would throw that out there. 
So next, as we head towards the relic itself, this is the area I talked about where they showed us how team mechanics would play out with an anthem. Now, every demo showed itself differently because it was live gameplay, and this wasn't exactly how my demo went, but it illustrates the point pretty well. In my demo, the storm was teleporting around the cannons, taking the fire away from the guys down below so they could collect the echoes and then deposit them. Once they got the ones in the direct line of fire, they then jumped up to help the storm take out the cannons in which the storm was still dodging fire so the Colossus could sneak behind and hit on its weak points like you see here. Then they took out the rest of the team and shut down the relic. But notice all the other passageways around here, guys. There are like caves, cliffs in the walls, different branches going out in all the directions. My feeling is that strongholds hide more than just one main objective. But as the fight goes on, we get a closer look at these enemy enforcers. First, notice that when an enemy is suffering from a status effect, it shows it above its name. This way the teammates can all see it and know what to do next in order to combo off of it or do bonus damage from it. Also notice the enemy itself. This enemy right here looks like a Colossus, and during the demo, one of the extra peaks we were given is actually just past this relic, but there was another enemy that I can't quite remember the name of, it was called an epic something, but it floated and it had lightning kind of like floating around its, like, uh, its midsection. And the more I think about it, the more I realized it was an enemy in a storm suit. So it looks like Scars might be teaming up with the Dominion. Now this is total guesswork, so take this lightly, but you can see the Colossus type of suit the Enforcers have. And the Scars, they seem a little too small to be piloting them, so this has to be Dominion. Anyways, that's just something to think about. Okay, so as we shut the turrets down and the relic is silenced, we start to head deeper into the stronghold and we see a brand new type of enemy. These spiders only have a few variants, at least from what I saw, but they are strong on numbers, although fairly easy to kill. The environment goes from a mystical shaper type of landscape to a brand new kind of toxic sludge nest of some kind. We also get a look at some of the world dangers as the javelin is taking damage from the acid pools it's walking through. That kind of signals right there that there will be all kinds of environmental damage to come. Fire, lightning, acid, frost, and I'm sure some kind of violent shaper energy will be there as well, but it makes it all the much more exciting. Alright, so I had to come back and edit this in because I noticed something at the very last second right before I was about to upload this video. I think it might be another look at a consumable. Watch how as the Colossus runs through the acid. He isn't taking that much damage, but he does. And all of a sudden, this odd motion happens with his arm. At first, I thought it might be reloading, but notice how the numbers and the weapons stay the same. But then, take a look at his health. See how the instant the motion starts, he goes back to full health? However small, this is some kind of applied healing. Once you watch it over and over, it starts to become clear. Now it's nothing major, but this is perhaps another possible consumable, maybe a med kit. So it cuts away right here to save on time, but there is a lot more fighting and traversal before you reach the boss. As it comes back in, we see a quick glimpse at either an ability or a weapon that the ranger uses here, and you can see that one shot takes out all three of these spiders. Now it could be a legendary weapon with some kind of special perk or mod on it, Either way, I thought that was worth pointing out. Alright, so as the flamethrower takes point and our Colossus uses its grenade launcher, we clear out the area and end up at a huge hole in the cave floor. Now remember when we started and I said something about consumables and I'll come back to it later? Well this is later. See the ranger throw out a flare to see how deep the hole is and if there's water or rock at the bottom? I believe these type of flares are the kind of things we can expect to see within our consumable slot. Again, it's not confirmed, but I'm pretty sure of it. Alright, so we jump down the hole and swim for a bit. We pop back out, and I actually completely forgot about this part when I did my first breakdown. As you can see here, there are scannable ruins on the walls all around Anthem. Unlocking these will add to a library or codex where you can then read up about it later. These are called Arcanist Resonance, and if you're not looking for them, they can be pretty easy to miss. Hopefully the blinking light will be tuned so it will be halfway noticeable, but I absolutely love hidden things like this. One of the biggest mistakes Destiny made was to take away dead ghosts out of its game, and it's awesome to see Anthem have a sort of like, you know, in-game lore that you can find, and it's not just all given to you as the game progresses. It makes you come around the world, and doing this gives you a whole new appreciation for the game itself. Not just Anthem, but any game that has this type of mechanic in it. Also, with Bioware's awesome storytelling capabilities, I really cannot wait to read up on these ruins. Anyways, now we get to see the exciting part of the demo, the boss fight. 
something they didn't even give you guys a sneak peek of during the gameplay reveal, but now you get to see exactly what I was talking about. Now in my demo, both Colossi took turns tanking the boss and getting its attention to focus on them while their teammates did all the damage. As the shield's health went down, they then would hop out and the, and the other Colossus would then come in, giving the first tank time to heal its shield and do some damage of its own. So keeping an eye on your status effect symbol and having the right loadout will be absolutely key. Now it doesn't show it here, but in the later stages of this boss fight, the boss will end up shooting webs at you, and if you get too close, the only way to get out of them is to be burned out with a flamethrower. So it throws in new mechanics the deeper you get into the fight. It's a pretty cool boss fight, and it ends with seeing a couple of supers here. First you get to see the Colossus super being used, which are like mini nukes going off, and the closer you get, the more blinding it becomes. And also, if you look on the right hand side, you can see the Storm use its super for a quick instance. Now, I still think that the Storm supers can be used more so than the Colossus. I think they charge up faster. Now, we know that doing damage actually charges your, uh, your super up faster, but I still think that maybe perhaps they have a natural cooldown that might be just a little bit faster than the tankier, you know, heavier fighting enemies like the Colossus. We'll have to wait and see if that's true or not but I believe that it is certainly possible. Now they did end the fight pretty early here, but I didn't get to see that much more than you guys did. They ended up shooting off one of the sacks, leaving only two left, but when one of the sacks collapses, it leaves a very small critical hit point right in the center of its body. So you have the two big sacks, you can hit them anywhere, but when they explode, it comes down to a really small point that you have to aim carefully to hit. But once that happened, it ends just like you see here. So not sure if this boss leads you deeper into the cave or if it has an alternate form. I think there is some kind of surprise in store once you get to the halfway point, but I guess that will have to wait for later. But that is about it guys, a longer look than the E3 trailer, but all in all, there was a lot to see and this extended look does a really, really good job showing off just how dense the world of Anthem is. Now it does seem a bit easy and the boss seems a bit tanky, but again remember this was tuned to be easier for the experience, not to mention with players who've rehearsed this 10,000 times over with upgraded abilities and suits. So I, ha I have no doubt it's going to be a fun and challenging experience, especially on higher difficulties. Now the good thing is that there will be checkpoints, they're called supply points. So if you don't get revived by your teammates, you will always be pretty close to the fight, well at least in the campaign. I can't wait until we start talking about the end game, but for now, that is really about it, freelancers. As always, thank you guys for watching, and I hope you enjoyed the demo. Some other game websites have just released some of their coverage on Anthem, so maybe we won't be hitting the summer slump just yet, but it will be coming soon. Anyways, as always, if anything new pops up, you can be sure that I got you covered. Take care, y'all, and subscribe for more Anthem coverage. Spank the thumbs up only if you enjoyed yourself, and comment down below on what you would like to see next or if you just want to say what's up. Feel free to check me out on Twitter or Facebook, Sly Nation, Sly Nation Gaming on the FB. Later, guys, and keep those eyes open for more Anthem in the very near future. But until then, this is your dude Sly, and I'll catch you all next time.